Hi guys, hope you're all well. This is Rob from the Exit Light channel. Hope everybody's safe and not getting too bogged down by the world. Anyway, before we start, hit that like button. And can you also subscribe if you're not already subscribed. And share this. Share this. Today I'm going to tell you a story. So what I want you to do is if you can if you're at home put your headphones in if you're not already wearing them sit down maybe turn the lights down <clears throat> and give me 10 minutes of your time okay here we go there was a man a businessman a good man who was very, very successful. He had built himself a beautiful house and he had married his high school sweetheart and they lived together and his business was going really well. And life didn't couldn't be better, really. He was, um, let me just get a drink, guys. He was happy. He didn't see anything wrong with his life. Oh, that was nice. So anyway, after a few years, his business starts to have some, some money problems. <clears throat> now he tries everything, remortgaging the house, all the normal avenues. And as time went on, the money problems got worse and worse and worse. So he felt responsible for all his employees. And his wife was now used to the, the high life nice house, nice car and he thought I've got to do something about this so he went to the he went to the the mafia, the mob and he borrowed £100,000 and he had to pay back way more than that and for, for a time, things went well. He was making, his business picked up a little bit. Um, he was able to make the repayments to the mob. But then all of a sudden, the business really took a nosedive. And he was really struggling. So anyway, he missed lots of repayments for the mob. And they said that they were going to come and they were going to kill him. Kneecap him, kill him, do all nasty things. So anyway, early on when they were in the relationship and when the business was doing really, really well, he had bought his wife two rings, beautiful diamond rings, and both of them together were worth just over a hundred thousand pound, a hundred thousand dollars. Sorry, Tracy will pick up on that. So he went to his wife, explained the situation. Said, please can I have my ring? Please can I have the rings back? I'll pay off the mob and hopefully we can start again and rebuild and she says, no, no, I'm not letting you have these rings. I'm not letting you have these rings at all. They're my rings. He says, but they're going to kill me. They're going to kill me. She says, well, tough. Tough love. If they kill you, they kill you. So anyway, he's pleads with her. 
pleads with her and pleads with her. He's desperate. He's a desperate man. Very desperate man. So anyway, this this night, he, he doesn't know what to do. So he's so desperate. There's too many desperates in that sentence. He's so desperate. He kills his wife. Hits her over the head with a ashtray. Kills her. Stone dead. Dead as a doornail. And he tries to take the rings. He can't get them off. For love of the money, he can't get these rings off her fingers. It's like they're welded on. So he gets a big pair of clippers and he clips both her fingers off and takes the rings, pays the mob back, gets rid of the body. And they, they let him off. About 10 years later, he has rebuilt his business again for a 25th time. <laughs> he rebuilt his business and he starts to be really, really successful. In fact, he's more successful than when he was successful the first time he was successful. So there you go. So he's, he's doing really, really well. And he, he gets himself his big house, doesn't remarry. Anyway, it still haunts him the fact that he had to kill his wife. He wasn't a murderer. But, well, he was a murderer, but you know what I mean. So anyway, this night he's out in the car driving home. And the weather is atrocious. It's windy. It's raining so hard. Um, and he pulls up outside his house, uh, jumps out of his big Mercedes, runs in the house, takes off his sweat coat, hangs it over the, the um, banister. Pours himself a double whiskey and gets a towel, he's drying himself. And all of a sudden, he has a couple of mouthfuls of whiskey. All of a sudden, on the door, and he, he stops, he thinks, who could that be? So he goes to the front door, and there's a little old lady all covered up with a shawl, soaking wet through. And he invites her in, he says, come in, please come in from the weather. The rain is terrible. Can I get you a towel? And she says, yes, please. So he gets her a couple of towels and she's drying herself and he sits her by the fire. He's got a big open fire. He sits her by the fire. And he says to her, would you like a drink? I can make you tea, I can make you coffee. I can also, would you like a, something stronger? She said, um, he went, and he, he says, we've got whiskey brandy, rum. He said, can I, have a, can I have a double whiskey, please? And she says, yes, please. So he, he gets her the whiskey. And as he hands her the whiskey, this little hand comes up shaking from the cold and from being so weak. He notices she has two fingers missing. So he thinks to himself, it can't be. It can't be after all this time. And he thinks to himself, is it the same two fingers? So he's looking down at her hand and he, he notices that it is the same two fingers. So he looks at the lady and he says to her, can I ask you a personal question? She said, of course you can. 
Yes, of course you can, my child. Ask me anything. So he says, your fingers. How did you lose your fingers? And she looks at him. She looks down at her hand where the fingers would have been. He looks up at him, looks back up at him. And she says to him, you took them. I hope you enjoyed that.